Okay, sorry about the clickbait. It's not exactly mine, but I do have the key for a month. I'm playing with this airplane, gonna see what it can do while the RV-14 is in the paint shop. Pull over right here and let me get out. Then go have some fun. Okay, you're just doing up the belts back there? Yep, just doing the belts. Okay, all right, thank you, sir. This is literally serial number one, so I really appreciate that Don trusted me to take it home. It's a super patriot. It's uh, the first of its kind. Everything we've done on the airplane is to try to make the airplane lighter and stronger. This is a unique opportunity to be able to do an unbiased evaluation of this airplane over a month at home. The last mission I flew in the RV-14 was bittersweet. So I just landed the airplane here in Alabama for drop-off to Evoke, and I'm saying goodbye to my silver baby. She's gonna not be silver next time I see her. So when the opportunity presented itself to fill in the airplane gap for the month of July, I jumped at it, but a lot of things had to happen to make it possible. And my friend Jay stepped up to help me out flying the biggest cross country he'd ever done, and he used infinite flight to help get ready for it. Where I fly, there's not a lot of terrain to deal with, so with this ridge that I saw, I decided to just fly it in the sim in infinite flight. And, but where I think it changes it um, to actually do it is you can actually get the feeling for, oh, this is uncomfortable. First step was to renew my BFR for my American license. And Jay was nice enough to put me on his insurance so I could fly his airplane for that. Oh, well, this is pretty cool. I did not expect to be doing this today. That's pretty wild, right? That is wild. Huge thanks to Errol for fitting in that booking. Ultimately, all that effort was about getting checked out in this airplane, ferrying it home, and then getting to spend a month evaluating it and making some pretty cool content. Jay and I relocated to Lock Haven, Pennsylvania to meet Don. All right, Don, it was good to meet you. Good to meet you too. Thank you for trusting me with your airplane. You know, if anybody on the planet can be trusted with an airplane, it's gotta be you, brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> Seriously. What you do and what you've shown people is that you're safety oriented in everything that you do. So. We're proud to have you fly our airplane. Now, to be clear, I'm not a stole expert by any means, but I do have experience in these types of airplanes and I've shared a lot of content with similar training, so I feel equipped to do it. You're going to look at it from, again, that layman standpoint, that average Joe kind of person, you know, because um, you've flown so many different things. I've been lucky with a lot of opportunities, yeah. Well, luck is one thing, but hard work is, is hard work pays off, brother. And, you know, we're, again, super excited about you looking at it and telling us what you really think. It's a 1900 pound gross weight airplane, 14 rib wing versus you know 18 or 19 ribs. The engine, the engine is a, it's an IO320 instead of a 360. We got nine to one to one compression ratio and we got EMAGs on it. We're using the Sinstick ground adjustable prop on it. All that being said is we got a, a lightweight engine that's 176 horsepower. We're using a four into one exhaust system so that it's tuned uh, so we can get the best performance out of the engine. But uh, the Super Patriot that you're gonna be flying is our full on version. It's the top of the line. It's got leather interior, but you're gonna get to see how the airplane performs. That's what we brought up here for. We want you to show what the airplane can do. You know, the slow flight characteristics that we built into it with the longer wings, ailerons push about 22 inches further out than normal, 90 inch flap, and the creature comforts, because there's so many of them. You know, we've got Behringer wheels and brakes on it, the big 10 inch ones, and you're gonna get, you're gonna love those guys. Because now when you press on a pedal, it's it's more even. You know, it's not like you, you they're touchy, not touchy. The Acme shocks that we have on it, the titanium Acme gear that's on it, every little detail that we can put into this airplane is, is there. And this hilariously rugged tailwheel is like nothing I've ever experienced before. So I'm looking forward to flying with it. Okay, so uh, I'll go break some cameras and let's go fly it. Let's do it, man. Air prop. You're gonna get in the front seat, obviously. You're gonna be PIC. We're gonna do a normal takeoff. Are right, you ready to go? Ready to go. As soon as the tail starts coming up, the airplane's ready to go. And it's a very short takeoff. It doesn't take much. Airspace arrive, pressure tank is good. Baby. Yeah, that's awesome. Alright, so how do you feel like I'm gonna back the power up a little bit, eh? Yeah, I'd pull it on back, you don't have to keep on going. Pull it back to about 2500 or whatever you wanna do. As long as it ain't red line, uh, it don't matter. I need you to make sure you got happy feet because things do happen fast. And just, you know, your normal climb out when we go out. 
Alright, so we're gonna not go faster than 70. You know, that's what I would go out and start slowing it down, you know, to get it to 70. Yeah. Yeah, because you're already in about pattern altitude already, you know. And I'd go ahead and just start playing with it. You get to get it, get it to 70, just go ahead and pull them out to flaps. Anyway, so downwind check is going to be, uh, there's no current feed, obviously, make sure it's both mixed. Yep. Master's on. Master's on, go ahead and pull up. We never, we never put the fuel pump on for the pre-takeoff check, so that's going on now. You do not have to, I'm sorry, only if you're really climbing really hard, uh -huh. then I recommend you turn it on. You don't have to turn it on. Well, Lock Haven traffic, uh, gray cub, turn in right base, 27, touch go. You want to do touch and go or stop? Let's do touch and go, like, say, just kind of get the feel for it. Go ahead and pull your other notch of flaps and just kind of start feeling what it does. Get it down to around 60. Okay, because I'm going 50. Too slow? No, 50's fine. No, don't go no lower than 50 with me and you in it, though, okay? Yep. So she's got a pretty good sink rate when you pull that throttle off with me and you in it. But you got it trimmed, it feels good right there? I think so. Lock Haven traffic, Great Cub, final, 27, touch go, 27 right, Lock Haven. Okay, so that's 65, a little fast. It is fast, you need to bring it down to about 50, and then the pump up. And we're going to stay with this number of flaps? Yep. So we're paving or grass, sorry? Either one. You choose it. Let's do grass, All right. side step. Alright. Lock Haven traffic, uh, we're splitting at 27 left for the Great Cub and the grass. Okay, so there's 55. That's about what I want. That's it. Go ahead and chop your throttle down. Just let her, let her settle in. Just like that. Now start your, your roll, your round out. Wait, one notch? Or no notches? Just take it all the way out if you want. Hit the gas and let's go. We're going to do some steep turns. Um, we're going to make sure that you see what it can do with the pasture in the back. Because uh, one of the things that I'd love for you to, you know, have somebody go up with you and, and have that experience of how nice it is in the back seat. So you need to have the feel for that extra, I call it the pendulum effect. Sure, yeah. You know, when you got more weight behind the CG, you know, versus where the pilot's at, that's when funny things happen. I've seen people that have 10,000 hours come in for a landing and because they don't have happy feet, you know, they're really staying on top of it, it starts swerving, and now that extra weight in the back just carries it on around to a ground loop. Man, that wind's kicking our butt. Yeah. But you still, it's still handling it just fine, though. Oh, yeah, that's no problem. You did good. Thank you. Yeah, this airplane feels super smooth and intuitive. Lower down to about 45. I'll just head over this area with the field there. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so going 1900 RPM and 45 indicated. Yep. Okay, it says two notches going to 40. Yeah, she's not even squawking at me. Like they trim it, trim it for 40. Yeah, so it's bouncing around between 38 and 42. So. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. So I want you to fly it right there. And if you need to give it a little power, but but try to keep that thing around that around that 40, 38 to 40 range. Yeah, we'll maintain altitude. Slow flight is the, one of the key features of this airplane. It'll actually start losing altitude and, and you'll have the nose up, but you'll be able to control it. It, it really is a weird feeling. Yeah. Um, and so I want to let you see that with me in the back seat, and then you go out and we're going we're gonna to watch you and let you do some of that. Let us make you some turns. Got to get the feel for it. Regular normal turns, no. Don't maybe it. Don't baby it at this speed, yeah. So no. like, something like that. Yep. Keep the nose up. There you go. Yeah, I was just trying not to yank and bank, you know what I mean? At this kind of speed. They don't want to load it up, but yeah, she takes it. She takes it fine, that's what I'm telling you, man. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Such a tight, <laughs> a tight, slow circle. <laughs> I wanted you to feel that because now you know it it's not gonna do anything stupid. Right, like I wouldn't yank it right now, but it's uh... No, no. Now yeah, I'll do another one the other way. Yep. Just do a coordinated turn, that's all you want to do. Keep the ball in the center right now is the main thing, you know? Keep the nose on the horizon, don't, don't let her sink. Yep. Yeah, 
with that sunroof, it's amazing. Yeah, because now, if you turn it a little harder, you can actually see the, at the top of the, uh, the wing if you turn it a little harder. Yep. When you get in it by yourself, just kind of get it up high and start playing with it just a little bit. But just watch what it does at 35 with me out, without me in here. It does the exact same thing even better. Okay. This is what we designed this airplane for. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, let's go back and land. I want you to do a nice three point or controlled, a controlled approach and then do a three point landing from this from this settings at at this speed, okay? Roger. You do that, then I know you got this. Like so you may actually have to hit a little bit of power right as that we get ready to touch down, but I want to see you be able to control it with me in this thing, you know? Yep. And then uh, once I get out of the airplane, then I want you to hit the power, you know, don't even bring the tail up, just kind of a little light pressure. And because the airplane's just going to fly off in a three point stance. Just wherever we land at this time, we'll stop and turn around, but uh, let's do that 45 to 50. And, and 652 at space, 27 right, lock haven, full stop. Get her prone if she wants to. Oh yeah, I didn't need to flip that. There's lots of energy still there. Awesome. <laughs> so easy. Awesome. Love it. Yeah, you're getting the hang of it already, my friend. So cool. It has so much power to weight ratio. We had 720 pound, foot pounds of thrust out of this engine in, in the zero setting on the prop. In a future episode from this series, we'll talk about how the ground adjustable prop works. But for the stole flying, we've got it set to four out of 10 pitch settings. Then go have some fun. Okay, all right, thank you, sir. So now it was just a matter of getting used to this thing with no weight in the back. It definitely was really crazy stable slow. I don't know if the ASI is believable at these numbers that it's reading, but wow, does this thing fly slow and it stays stable. There's 31, there's 30. I'm not even seeing the angle of attack yell at me yet. Like, I'm not sure it's possible for a pitot tube to read. 25. With the angle of attack being this high, but the airplane is still stable. That's crazy. Lots of control. And then I wanted to get it up into a faster speed and really get into pulling some G's and seeing what steep turns felt like. It was understandably a little bit heavy on the controls with such a large wing, I guess. And apparently the Dynan autopilot servos also add a little bit of control friction that you have to fight against, but it's not too bad. <laughs> that was freaking easy and beautiful. That was awesome. And then after a good night of sleep, Don and I turned the prop up to number 10. He sent me on my way, and I followed Jay home for a loose two-ship formation back to Canada. This is a case where I'm flying a new-to-me aircraft with avionics that I'm not super familiar with. I got an iPad on my lap, which isn't going up in that camera angle, because I'm not really thinking about filming here. I have Sirius XM connected, thanks to this bad boy, the Garmin GDL-51. So I'm taking my whole avionics package with me, and I have up-to-date weather. I'm going to check my destination. I can see that I'm not going to be dealing with this uh, layer that arguably is moving from scattered to broken is trending in the direction that I want it to for my destination is going to be few so this is not like it's going to close up on me and become a broken or solid layer which I would love that's a good peace of mind and there's nothing showing up on radar I have to go all the way to the ocean to see anything today so it's a beautiful day and the first thing I did when I got at home was to hit the local grass strip where I'd learned to fly tailwheel with my mentor Dennis back in 2014. It was surreal to get the original Super Cub that I learned to fly in beside this thing and work on trying to figure out my stole techniques at the same grass strip. I've got a solid Cladahoid debrief that I'll be including in the future episodes, and please submit any questions or things you'd like to see focused on when I share the next ones. A big part of what I was doing initially was just working on very slowly building up my confidence to break with the tail up to shorten the landing rolls. 
The next thing I did was start to share this airplane with some friends, and first up was my buddy Blake. He was the first passenger in the RV-14, so that was fitting. We are going slow. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, give it a try to get even slower. Like, get, get uncomfortable, see what it feels like. The nose is gonna be feel high. It's gonna start getting real mushy, then just be gentle with aileron and more about rudder runner. Right. Yeah, so there's 39, there's 38. And your coordination is perfect. I feel like I'm a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> if you've missed any previous episodes with Blake, he's a pilot as well. He's got some tailwheel experience, and he did a good job flying from the back seat, but I took it short final to slip it in. Okay, I'll take it. Your airplane. Slip it in. Cool. That was awesome. Want to do another one? Yeah, sure. Let's do one more. Go right from here. So yeah, flying low and slow with the windows open with friends was awesome, but it was definitely super rewarding to be able to share this with my wife and daughter. So do you want to just fly around, or do you want to see what it's like to land on a grass strip, or what do you want to do? Whatever you want. It's all for you. Why don't you show the view low and slow over the countryside? We could do that. Yeah, I kind of, I like that. Okay, let's do that. I was gonna slide nice and slow and quiet. So pretty. Now I'm flying to the sunset for a bit. Hell yeah. That camera back there is still blinking. Yeah. Give it some kind of like, I don't know, something. Oh, I have already. <laughs> All right. This is like a cool memory for me because I remember when I first learned how to fly the Super Cub. Yeah. I was flying right here in the sunset by myself in oh. the early days. So now I got my daughter. Yeah. It was a bit of a race to get this one completed before AirVenture because this is essentially real time publishing, which I don't often do. But, anyways, this airplane will be at AirVenture. So look for uh, Patriot Aircraft and the RV 14 will be at AirVenture. And I'll be there a fair bit at the Lycoming booth which is about here on the grounds, and Patriot Aircraft will be about here, not too far from there. And I'm excited to meet whoever can make it to AirVenture, and if you can't make it, we got lots more content coming. I shot a lot of stuff with the Super Patriot, and there's also been several IFR missions with the RV-14 that I'll be sharing soon. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp.